Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord. We just, uh, we're just just really glad and, and we're alive. <laughs> we're, we, we, we walk up with smile, with joy, with peace, and the comfort that we needed, Lord. We fell asleep, Lord, all throughout the night with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, for all the people that we were able to have rest, Good night rest last night. I just pray that you will give them good night, a uh, good day today, and for them to rest in your presence. And today, Lord, we come here together. We want to rest in your presence. Lord, as what you said, cast all our heavy, heavenly built laden, all this burden that we have, and you will give. God, we give it to you all and so that we will find rest in you, so we can have rest in you, Lord. And because we know that you care for us. But you said, Lord, in your word, that pass all your curse upon him and he will give you rest. He will, because he cares for you. And so we embrace that truth. Today, we want to rest in your presence. We want to rest in you, Lord. And we want to be with you all throughout the day and for the rest of our lives. That's what we ask. And we want to, we want to worship you as we come today. Fellowship, Lord, we celebrate of who you are. You are a good, faithful God. And, and, and you are loving God. And you are there for us. Always be with us. Just like your name, Emmanuel, God is with us. And today you are with us here as we, as you said in your word, as you said it yourself, Father God, that two or three that gather in your name, you are in the midst of us. So thank you. We acknowledge your presence. Holy Spirit, come as we come to worship you in the spirit and truth. Lord, as we come, just who we are in you. And I pray that you will pour out your spirit, Lord, and let, let it go for you, Lord Jesus. Pour out your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody, why don't we just stand before the Lord? We are one family, one body, his arms, his feet. And sometimes he uses us as his voice. So let's uh let's just take a moment, let's greet each other, let's greet the people around us before we start our service. Bless them, show them the love of the Lord.
temple, oh God. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you that you always listen to all our prayers, oh God, that you always help us and fight us for all our battles here on earth. And thank you so much that you bless all these blessings that we give it back to you, oh God. Thank you so much for all those people who give in this church, supporting this church, oh God. We are not many. You are not looking for uh, quantity. You are looking for quality, oh God, the true worshiper, oh God. Thank you so much, oh God. And those that gives online, thank you that you will uh, always remind them, oh God, that you are still on their side, oh God, whether uh, they are alone, oh God, you are on their side. And thank you for all those people who are faithful in giving. And thank you so much. Let the joy and peace, oh God, in their heart and bless all the people, oh God, that give this time and the coming times and the coming years and the coming years. Lord, and thank you so much for their faithfulness. We give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it, it's powerful. And it, and it also made a promise to God, not only you will be my God, but also he's saying, that aside from you will be my God, he was saying, I will give my tithes. <laughs> and I think that's so powerful, like for us to be, yes, we have God, but, but we have to make covenant with him, the same commitment that he has for us. He gave 100%, but we will only give 10% for him. But actually, God doesn't need anything from us to tell you the truth. But it is something that for us to be able to see our faithfulness in him. Amen. And that's the, that is the, um, the symbol of tithes and offering is, is giving back uh, the glory to God. It's a form of, um, or it's a symbol of knowing that we are faithful. It's a symbol of knowing that, that God is giving us abundantly, that God's provision is with us. If you cannot give, maybe God's provision is lack in your life. That's why many people, they, cannot, they hold on to their giving because somehow they don't, it's not too much for, for what God has given them, right? But uh, either way, that's, it's between you and God. It's more personal than anything else. And uh, I'm, I'm taking that as, as personal myself. It's, uh, I, will, I will not say it's subjective, but it is, it is God's word. Not my word, but it's God's word. So definitely it's, it's, it's for us to respond, how we respond. And your response is subjective, but the command is for everyone. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly, thank you for today, Lord. We thank you, and we're so excited today to hear from you, Lord, to hear from your word, not from myself. <laughs> I always pray this, Lord God, every day, every time I got a chance to to have an opportunity to bring the gospel, to bring the truth in the life of other people. Lord, I always ask you to shut my mouth, to keep my mouth shut and let, and I want you to speak, Lord, not me. And I want people to see you. I want people to hear you. And I want people to experience you through your words. And myself, Lord, I want to hear from you today. And speak to all of us, Lord. And I pray that you will cover us all under your wings. That today, our ears, our hearts, our mind will be open. And willing to be empty by you. And fill them with your Holy Spirit. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. amen. How many of you are excited in the part three of our Jacob's story. Amen. <laughs> Kuya, thank you for being excited. You're following this one. And I myself, I'm following this every Sunday. Uh, Jacob, sorry, next week, 
we're gonna look for Jacob's son, which is Joseph, and Mickey is gonna do that. And I know Mickey has a lot of dream. He still have a big dream in his life, and and let's see how he can relate himself through Joseph. And I'm excited. I'm excited myself, you know. And and with this, you know, with the story of Jacob, it's just so powerful. And I, as I said, all the story that I, that we've gone through. I take them all personally for myself because through this story, I myself become more matured in a way that Jesus Christ increased in me and the way I see myself more and more the way I get to know God. And that's what the key that I found out with this word. With Jacob's story, the more he knew God, the more he knew himself the more he get to know himself. And that's what we need to find out as well, more and more in our lives. To get to know God is to discover ourselves as well. You know, and let's have some review. So the first, uh, last Sunday, we talk about, we talk about the, the ladder. And of course, it's, I've made it clearly to you, the ladder that Jacob saw is Jesus, right? And... So anyway, this is the wrestle with God. That's what we're going to talk about today. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Israel is here. <laughs> For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. This is in Genesis 33, verse 20, 32, verse 28. So a little bit of review last Sunday that we talk about the ladder uh, that reached to heaven. And so Jacob dreamed about the ladder that reached to heaven. This is the covenant of God to Jacob, the ladder, the promise of God to Jacob. I'm going to give you this ladder, the ladder that provides, the ladder that gives you um, assurance that I am with you. And this is the ladder that gives you assurance to go to heaven when you die. <laughs> this is the ladder that gives you to go to back to the paradise that is supposed to be for man. That is the ladder. And the dream signifies that Jacob ladder established contract, contact between man and God. It represents progress, ascension, and spiritual passage through the level of initiation. The providence of God is the ladder. A constant correspondence kept up between heaven and earth. You know, the angels, right? That's the, 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 the part that they are ascended in heaven and earth. And, and Jesus is the ladder, the foot on earth in his human nature, the top in heaven in his divine nature. In John 1, 51, Jesus mentioned that himself, that he says that, you know, that evidence of that he is the ladder and is the way. And he said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, Hereafter, you shall see heaven open and, and the angels of God ascending and descending from heaven to earth, right? Upon whom? The Son of Man. And the Son of Man is Jesus. So this is clearly, Jesus has stated that, that uh, the dream of Jacob is not over yet. The dream of Jacob is for you because of the son of man. Is that clear? I think it's so clear. It is clear to me what that promise of God, the blessing from Abraham, the blessing of the God of Abraham, Jake, Isaac, and the God of Jacob is now belongs to you because of Jesus. Amen. As we know that, that Christ is the way. All God's people come to us and all our service to go to him by Christ. If God dwell with us and we with him, it is by Christ and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means Christ's blood on the cross. Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. John 14, 6. God is, God's is specific command to Jacob is to be his God. 
How many of you saying, you are my God, O Lord? Meaning, what is the meaning of you are my God? You are my personal Savior and Lord of my life. What does that mean? Meaning, it's to know Him. To know Him, to worship Him, to trust and obey Him. That is what you said when you make a promise to the Lord. Lord, you will be my Savior and Lord of my life. What does that promise mean? Is I want to know you. I want to obey you. I want to trust you. That is what it means. I want to follow you. That is your commitment. And you know, uh, the angels, you know, in the ascending and uh, descending heaven. Today, the, uh, the angels, maybe they're still existing. God is still giving that, giving um, from time to time, God will send angels for your protection. But the, today, what we have is the Holy Spirit that protects you that give comforts to you, that give assurance to you, just like Jacob experienced that very night. This is the assurance of Jacob. The Spirit descending and ascending from heaven to earth. These angels are the assurance, right? However, Jesus, when he was here on earth, he made a covenant that he said, I will not leave you until the end, and I will give you the spirit. And that's what he said after the resurrection, it happened. He met his disciples, and he said, peace be with you, and he breathed on them. He breathed on them, and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Wow. That's, that's, that's what it is. Today, we have the spirit of God. It's our comfort. It's our assurance. And uh, last thing that I just said from last Sunday is that Jacob made a promise to God in that very place and he called it Bethel, the house of God. Today, the house of God is you as well. You are the church of Christ, not the building, not a place. But you yourself is the place where God dwells. Are you with me? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in you. And, and, and through that, God and, God and he consecrated the stone as mark of the place where God confirmed of the inheritance of, for God's chosen people. See, you are God's chosen people. You are the place. That Jacob put a mark on you. That you are a chosen one. And you are the one that I believe that chosen. You are here. Every single person here, I believe you are the chosen. How many of you believe that I'm, you are chosen? I, 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 I stood that with that. And uh, as what we said, it, so come and rise up. My encouragement, so come and rise up and let your light shine. The dream is not over. Let dream to take this word that his kingdom come and his will be done in this world. That is the dream. How many of you dream about that? That is the dream of Jacob. Jacob is you. Jacob dream for, for him to see the kingdom of God and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the paradise will, will be here. <laughs> I mean, of course, there's a paradise that God will build for sure. And not in this world, but definitely we're, we're going to be all there for all those who are chosen. For those who are having the blessing that God bless. Amen. Now, let's, uh, with that introduction, uh, with that review... I, I'm, this is, Jacob made a promise to God uh, to tell you one more time, once again, is the promise of Jacob, right? If you look at it, if God really go with me and will keep me in the way that I go, I will give, and will give me bread to eat and will bring me 
to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. Number one promise, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone shall be the house of God. And all of that gives me, I will give back to God one tenth as an offering. All that he gives me, all the provision that God provided for me, I will separate my tenths. And that is for you. 90% is for me and for everyone else. But the 10% of the things that you gave me, I will give to you. Now, if you don't believe that God gave you that clothes, and the 10% of it is uh, for, for God, then don't give. But if you believe God gave you the $100 in your pocket, then give that $10 to Him. If you believe that God the, God is the one who gave. Well, Kuya Peter, Kuya Peter gave me this $100, so it's not God who gave me that. Is that true? Someone gave me this, so it's not God who gave me that. I worked hard for this, so God is not giving me that. So it's mine. No 10% for God, because it's not, it's not the one who gave me this. How many of you believe that? I don't. <laughs> I believe every provision that I'm having right now is, built, is from God. It, this house is from God. So the 10% of this house is, belongs to God. And this is the 10% of God. Actually, this is half. Maybe 20, 30%. And this is for God. Right? So thank you, Lord, for that revelation. But what is this promise is all about? You know, when, when I look at it, the whole entire week, God is speaking to me. This is not a threat from, to God. Lord, if you give me that assurance that, that you're going to be with me, you're going to provide for me, you're going to protect me, then I'll, you will be my God. Is that Jacob saying, is that Jacob saying that, if you don't give this, then you will not be my God. Is that what he's saying? What do you think? If you're not giving this provision, I'm not going to give you my tithes. Is that what Jacob's saying here? Actually, when I discovered this, I cried and I humbled myself to the Lord. What Jacob is saying is not a threat to God. Is what Jacob is saying is completely dependency on God. Lord, I can't do anything. Now I don't know what would be my future. So be with me. Provide for me. Protect me. And I will obey you. That's dependency on God. How many of you? This is completely Fully dependency on God. The way I look at what Jacob promised to God is the fully and completely dependency on him. Not about what I can do. How many of you? Not about what my neighbors can do for me or my friends can do for me, my relatives can do for me or myself can do. But it's about God. Because in this very moment, Jacob is totally hopeless. Jacob is totally out of the, his word that he thinks. His expectancy for him to be a blessing. And all those dreams that he has is all gone. Just one second after deceiving his father. After his betrayal with his brother. Everything, all his dream gone. Now, he's declaring his dependency on God. I'm not going to keep further with these things, but let's keep onward. So Jacob, so this is the rest of the story. Then Jacob went onward in his long journey. He walked across the river Jordan in the shadow place, feeling his way with his stop. He climbed mountains and journeyed beside the great desert on the east. And the last came to the city of Haran, the last, the, you know, and at the last, 
he came to the city of Haran. Beside the city was the well where Abraham's servant had met Jacob's mother, Rebecca. Then after Jacob had waited for a time, he saw a young woman coming with her sheep to give them water. Jacob took up the flat stone that was over the mouth of the well and drew water and gave, and gave it to the sheep. And when he found that this young woman was his own cousin, Rachel, the daughter of Laban, he was so glad that he wept for joy. And at that moment, he began to love Rachel and longed to have her for his wife. Rachel's father, Laban, who was Jacob's uncle, gave a welcome to Jacob and took him into his home. And Jacob asked Laban if he would give his daughter, Rachel, to him as his wife. And, Jacob's, and Jacob said, if you give me Rachel, I will work for you seven years. Uh, and Laban said, it is better that you should have her than a stranger. You should marry her. So Jacob lived seven years in Laban's house, caring for his sheep and oxen and camels. But his love for Rachel made the time seem short. At the last day came for the marriage. And they brought in the bride, who after the manner of the land was covered with a thick veil so that her face could not be seen. And she was married to Jacob. And when Jacob lifted up her veil, whoo, he found that he had married, not Rachel. Wow. But her older sister, Leah, who was not beautiful. <laughs> Sorry for that word. Well, she's still beautiful. It's a creation of God. But it's not that beautiful as Rachel probably in the sight of Jacob, right? That's what he meant. And woman Jacob did not love, and, and woman Jacob did not love at all. Jacob was very angry. <laughs> there you go. Well, of course, that when someone betrayed you or someone deceived you, when you found out, you will be angry. The same as Jacob. Got that human nature, right? Yeah. So, uh, he was very angry that he had been deceived, though what's just the way in which Jacob himself had, had deceived his father and cheated his brother Esau. But his uncle Laban said, this is what his uncle Laban said. There you go. In, here, in, in our culture, something like that, in, in our uh, Land, we never allow the younger daughter to be married before. I think that is also in the Philippines. <laughs> they, they, we don't want the younger uh, sister be married or someone else older than us. They should marry before the youngest, uh, I think. But that's what he said. Laban said, in our land, we never allow the younger daughter to be married before the older daughter. Keep Leia for your wife and work for me seven years longer. And you shall have my daughter, Rachel, also. For in those times, now, for in those times, as we have seen, men often had two wives or even more than two. So Jacob stayed seven years more and 14 years in all before he received Rachel. Wow, as his wife. That is too much. How many of you can wait 14 years when you're waiting for something? That's so long. Well, to tell you, I'm waiting for 17 years now for something that I wanted to, that I'm expecting from God that God will give me. But I don't know if it's going to come or not. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe yes. But I'll trust God for everything that I'm waiting for. Okay? Whatever it is, God, God knows uh, my heart. And whatever you have in your heart that you're waiting for God to respond and and answer your prayer or whatever in your the desires in your heart, it will come. Just wait. That's endurance right there that we see in, in the life of Jacob. So uh, to make the whole the story short, you know, um, so Rachel, this uh, um, 11, so Jacob, Living in Haran, he has 11 sons were born to him. But only one of these was the child of Rachel, which called Joseph. And we were going to find out next week about Joseph, right? That's so special. And, and Jacob, and 
And Jacob came back to the land of Canaan. He came back to the land of Canaan and with his 11 sons. And, an, and another son was born to him and called him Benjamin, right? And the second child of his wife, Rachel, whom Jacob loved so well. But soon after the baby came, his mother, Rachel, died. Mm, sad, but there's another baby. So Jacob was grieving, was filled with sorrow, and named his son Benjamin. But before the, he came back to Canaan with his family, he met his best enemy in the world and his brother and his best friend all the times in the world. And that is brother Esau. So let's find out when he, how he met Esau again. So this is the reunited of Jacob and Esau. Okay. So that's what before. He, so I, I told you about the story before they, the, before that, this is what happened. Jacob wrestled with God and man at the same time. So, and I call this topic with Jacob. So Esau met, Esau comes to meet Jacob. Uh, uh, kind of some people like probably feel about when someone really angry of you and he wants to kill you. And now he wants to meet you. What do you what do you feel like? Right? Before Esau wants to kill him, right? Before he left. After 16 years, probably, or maybe 20 years, they will meet again. And here's my brother that wants to kill me. I'm going to meet him. But before that, let's, let's look at on the story. Then Jacob sent a messenger ahead to, brother, to his brother Esau who was living in the region of Seir in the land of Edom. He told them, give this message to my master Esau. Humble greetings from your servant Jacob. Until now, I have been living with Uncle Laban. And now I own cattle, donkeys, flock of sheep and goats, and many servants, both men and women. I have sent this messenger to inform my Lord, my coming, hoping that you will be friendly to me. <laughs> this, is his, yeah, this is what he's hoping for, that hope you, you're okay with me despite of what I've done before, right? And he's hoping for that. After delivering the message, the messenger returned to Jacob and reported, we met your brother Esau and he's already on his way to meet you with an army of 400 men. Wow, that's scary. And I believe Jacob's scared too with this. Upon hearing this word, with 400 men. Oh, how can I top that? He's going to kill me. Right? That's what he's maybe thinking that time. So he's so scared. Jacob was terrified at the news. He thought if Esau meets one group. Uh, so he divided his household along with the flock and herds and camels into two groups. So he thought if Esau meets one group and attacks him, perhaps the other group can escape. Wow. How wise Jacob is. <laughs> but this is the wise thing that he, Jacob did. Above all this mind that he has. I have my own way. This is man thinking. See? The man thinking is, okay, maybe I just, I just divided my, my family into two. So that if we'll be attacked, then the other one can escape. That's the man does. Many of us, when we do things, we do that way. But one thing that Jacob did is the most amazing thing that we could ever done as well in our lives. And what he did, he prayed to God. And look what he prayed. And he said, Oh God, of my grandfather Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, oh Lord, you told me, return to your own land and your relatives, and you promised me, I will treat you kindly. I am not worthy of an unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown me. See, Jacob, in this prayer, he saw himself. I am not worthy. How many of you see yourself that way? I am not worthy of faithfulness of God. Can you see yourself that way? 
that you are not worthy of the faithfulness of God, your, his grace and his mercy. So the, that's the prayer of Jacob right there. Lord, I am not worthy. I knew that. So he knew for himself. I knew that. When I left home, he continued, when I left home and crossed the Jordan River, I owned nothing except a walking stick. Now my household fills two large camps because God showed the provision for him. Now he has all this property. He has all these assets in life because, you know, God is with him. Oh, Lord, this time, please rescue me from the hand of my brother Esau. I am afraid that he is coming to attack me along with my wives and children. But you promised me. Now, he made a statement again. This is your covenant, Lord. I will surely treat you kindly and I will multiply your descendant until they become as numerous as the sun, the seashore to many count. What do you see in those parts? That prayer is so powerful. First, with this prayer, it's totally acknowledging God of who God is. His faith, God is God that he knew is faithful for him. And he acknowledged himself who he is, that he is not worthy of the faithfulness of God. I am the same way. I am not worthy of the grace of God. And one thing that is more powerful here, Jacob reminds God's promise. How I many of you can, can just tell God of his promise when you're in time of, you know, you're, you can't do anything else. You did everything that you've done, but this time, Lord, I'm desperate. How many of you are desperate with God? I'm desperate with God every day of my life because I know my capacity, my own way of thinking is not the same as God. The Jacob did because he know for himself the one that he planned, that he thought is saying, okay, I'm going to separate my family so that someone can be escaped. But that's not God's plan for us. God's plan for us is totally secured us God plans for Jacob, his whole entire family. But Jacob make way, another way for him to be saved. For some of his family will be saved and, and, some, and the rest will be gone. Is that what you're thinking when, when you think, okay, it's okay to spare these people. Then everybody died. No, I will spare everyone else. There's someone like, I believe that one day, Ask me, if you were in the boat and only one you can save, which one you will save, your mother or your wife? There's one challenge me that way. I said, all of us will die. If I just only can save one, all of us will die. I think God is not like that. He will save us both, all of us, if he will. If his will, his will be done. If his all of us will die, no one will be saved, just us, all of us will die. How many of you can choose that way? Jacob did not choose that way. But one thing that I, he humbled himself to the Lord and prayed to him. I know my way is not your way, God. So this is my way. I was thinking maybe yeah, I saved some of my family. I spared some of my family but not the rest, but not the rest. That's not God's plan for us. God will spare all of us. So if I will see one of my member family that doesn't believe in God, I will keep praying. I will keep praying for that person to be renewed because God promised to all of us be saved going to heaven. Do you believe? I have cousins, I have friends, I have relatives. Maybe you are the same way. 
you have some relatives, some friends, that some, someone that you love and you want them to be saved. Oh, trust me, pray to God. Jacob did. Now let's, let's find out what happened. And he rose, arose, arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed over the ford of Jabok. He took them, sent them over the brook and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone and man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip and socket of Jacob's hips right here was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the daybreak. But he said, Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, remember, I told you, what is your name? Remember that the first day, the birthright of the story of Jacob, Isaac asked, who are you? What is your name? Are you Esau? And Jacob said that time, I am Esau. Now this time, what Jacob said, Jacob what Jacob said is this. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Wow. What is wow about that? Well, during that time when he was tried to betray his dad, he said his, his, his identity pretended to be Esau. So he did not say that I am Jacob. But this time he was talking to God. And this time God asked him again, who are you? What's your name? And Jacob did finally said, I am Jacob. Now, what is the significance of this? Jacob said, and, 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 God said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. When I look at this part, it's right here. You know, when we stated to ourselves that, yes, I am Romy, I am a sinner, I am, I am not worthy of your grace and mercy, when you humble yourself to God of who you are, know who you are, God will forgive you and God will give you grace. It is no longer your, your name, Jacob. It is no longer Jacob. You are now called Israel. When you receive the forgiveness of God, you are no longer Gloria, Peter, Valerie, Israel, Robert, Wilda, you are no longer that name, that who you are. You are now Christ that lives in you. Remember that part of Paul saying, it is no longer I that lives in me, Christ lives in me. So I am not that Romy before. I am a new creation. Israel is the mark of transformation of Jacob, that he obeyed God. Because God proved that, he, that, that Jacob did not just wrestle with God, but he al Jacob also wrestled with men. He wrestled this one. How many of you think that every day in our lives we, we do wrestle? I do. I still wrestling with this word. So thank God that God is with me. It's always with me. I keep on. Now, with that thought, you know, and the rest, it come out the story. You know, God blessed him. And actually, one thing that highlighted me the most here is what, when Jacob asked, God, what is your name? 
<laughs> so Jacob asked as well, right? What is your name? And then, but God did not respond to him. Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is that you asked about my name? That's what God said. And he blessed him there. So just, just God asked, why do you have to ask by my name? And then God blessed him anyway. So he did not look for the answer or not really answering. Probably this is just a prerogative question. <laughs> but God said it to you. You don't have to ask my name who I am. I'm going to bless you right now because you prove it to me that you are faithful, you are obedient son that I have. You are a chosen. And so the end is definitely some of that. Now, let's go back. Esau reunited with Jacob. In Genesis chapter 33, verse 3 to 4, it says, Then he crossed over before them and bowed himself. So this is Jacob. Jacob crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times un until he come near to his brother. So while he's coming to the brother, he's just keep, keep doing this, right? He's just showing his humility, uh, forgiveness, asking for forgiveness to his brother. So Esau saw him and ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they all wept. Well, you see, this is the forgiveness of God. This is showing that Jacob is not in control of the situation. When sometimes we are expecting things that to happen in our lives, do not expect. Just let God will do it for you. Don't expect anything, but rather let God will do the rest and have rest in Him. No matter what we do, of course I'm not saying do, do not work for something that you need to work for. That you wanted to really make sure that everything is okay, right? Do that. But don't just stay like that way. But rather give it to the Lord and let God will do the rest. Let God will do the rest. That's what Jacob did. And totally, as I said, what God revealed to us on his promise, Jacob is not threatening God, but rather is totally surrendering his life to him and totally humbling himself and totally declaring his complete dependence on God. How many of you today that we could do that? That we could do what Jacob did. It is my conclusion. We can what we can learn from Jacob's story. Like Jacob, he wrestled in the every day, right? With man, nature, and circumstances. We have circumstances in life every day, and we wrestle with that. We wrestle with people that we encounter every day. In the Philippines, they have typhoon, they have earthquake. That the na that's the nature that they will wrestle with. Maybe here the same way. We have the cold, too cold sometimes. We wrestle with that. I mean, right? Minnesota, come on. Right? We wrestle that every day. How many people I heard, they grew up here, they, they were born here, but... They were been here for 50 years in their life, but they're still complaining of the um, of the cold. I don't understand that. So if you don't like it, just go. <laughs> you don't guys don't, don't like here in Minnesota, then leave Minnesota, right? Be grateful. I'm telling you. So don't just complain. We we do wrestle, but I'm talking about here. Romans 5, 1, 5. This is our assurance. Right here. I, it's powerful because you have Jesus in your life. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Jacob has peace with God. 
But now we have Jesus Christ. We have peace in, Christ, in God because of Jesus Christ has done for us. And because of our faith, Christ has brought us into the, this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Wow, look at that. And we now can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance. Remember that. We will run to these trials and all these circumstances in life that we don't want. But that produces endurance. And endurance develops strength. And, 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 and uh, endurance develops strength of character. And character is strengthen our, our confidence of hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with this love. See? The Holy Spirit is with us. He's the one that filled us up. In Hebrew 12 verse 1, because sometimes we probably, I cannot endure this problem. I cannot endure these things that I'm having, this laden. It's so heavy for me. Hebrews 12 verse 1 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside. What? What is our word where we're trying to lay aside here? The weight. The weight and the sin we so easily ensnare us and let us run with endurance the race that's, that is set before us. Lay aside. Take that away from you. Now the sin is, is something that, that a big thing here. It's a big deal what the Hebrew said. Right? Sin is a part of heavy laden. Sin is a part of heavy laden in life. When you sinning, you have more you have more load, you are more loaded on heaviness when you're sinning, I'm telling you. And once you sin, that cannot take away apart from you. So that's why we, what we should do, what we should respond is to take away that from us. And all this weight, all this loaded that we have, give it to the Lord. Make sure Rest upon him like what, they, what Jacob did. What Jacob did, his completely dependency on God, he just let God do the rest. How many of you willing to give everything to God today? It's a challenge for all of us Christians. Come on. We want to be shining this word. So we want God. Let God work in our lives. Trust Him and obey Him and do whatever it takes to, fu to fulfill the works that He began in you. Philippians 1 6, He said that He, and remember this, right? In Philippians 1 6, being confident of this very thing. That he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. We can also learn from Jacob's story that people throughout the Bible wrestle with God in not only in a physical sense. That includes mind. That includes emotion. Mentality. Spiritually. So not just physically, we are wrestling, but we, all the aspects of our lives. There's nothing wrong with question and the need to explore the Bible more. I keep telling you, join the Bible study. Join to, to, to keep. If you can't do it on your own, then come to our Bible study. 
You can question the way you wanted to ask, whatever you wanted to ask. And God will answer you for sure. All the question in your heart, all the question in your mind, through his word, he's the answer. Jesus is. There's nothing wrong about that. That's what I said. Telling you, Christian faith is not blind. Isn't blind. But rather, based on how God has come true for us in the past, we can wrestle with him and still emerge with new identity like Jacob. He become Israel. No longer Jacob. Like us today. We are no longer what the past. Our past. Maybe in the past, like me, I am filthy, I'm garbage, I'm stinky. But today, because of grace of God, because of Jesus, I am the sweet aroma in His praise. Because I, that's my work in my life. I said, Lord, I want to know you more and expose what is the truth in my life. And you are the truth, oh God. And today I'm here to give glory in your name. My dream, what promise that I can give to you like Jacob did. My promise is totally dependency on you, God. Completely and fully. Trust you alone and nothing else in this world that I look on to but rather you Holy Spirit come and the last thing that we can learn from Jacob's story is the forgiveness of God when that expectation of Jacob from his brother It's unfathomable when, when you expect something that is going to happen and didn't happen the way you thought about. Like what Jacob did. He thought about his brother that is going to still, he's still angry with me, still going to kill me. But that's not what happened the day he met his brother. The day he met his brother, he hugged him, he kissed him, he lay on him, lay down on his chest and say, I love you. I forgive you. The same way today, we can enter into relationship with God by asking forgiveness for our sin and declaring Jesus Christ to be our Savior and Redeemer through admitting our brokenness to him. God can give us a new life as his children and we can enter into eternal relationship with him. Full of his blessing and God promises over our lives. Jacob was able to experience a new identity through his new name, Israel. In the same way, when we come to know Christ, we experience the transformation it changes everything, our lives, our thoughts, our actions, our deeds. If you let him and if you allow him to work in your life and fully trust him and saying, God, I cannot wrestle with you anymore. I cannot wrestle in this world anymore. But rather, I will trust you. And I desperate, just like Jacob, is desperate. That's why he wrestled with God, because he's desperate to bless him. And I'm here, God, today. We're here today, Lord. We're desperate to bless us. The same as Jacob desired because of his dependency on you. Showing the wrestling with God. It's showing his, the humility of, of, and surrendering of Jacob. So the same thing that we are today. Humble ourselves. 
and totally surrender our lives. God, let's start. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking it with us tonight, today, Lord. God, I just pray all this word that came to us today, Lord, in our hearts, in our minds, oh Lord Jesus, Lord, bring that in life. Bring that, Lord, in our lives. So people, even other people see who you are in our lives. And so your name be glorified as Jacob did, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Because of you now, I'm, I am no longer that Romy before. Now I am different. Standing here, Lord, for your glory. And that is my prayer for all of us that are here, for people that are listening today and watching this, Lord. It's not me that they're watching, but rather you, Lord, that they're hearing, that they're listening to the words, Lord God. And if they hear your voice, Lord, I pray that you do not harden their heart. So open their heart, Lord Jesus, and ask you and completely beg you, Lord God, for your forgiveness to their heart. Lord, we come here and say, I, we humble ourselves to you and say, God, come. Let your will be done and have your way. Not our way, not what we know, but your way, Lord. Your way will have your way, Lord. Have your way in the lives of your people. Have your ways in the lives of your people right here, Lord Jesus. All of us here, Lord, have your way. Not our way. So. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now receive the blessings of God that is for you. That is for all of us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May He lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace that you may walk in total and fully dependence on Him. Trust Him, obey Him, love Him, and follow Him. I pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's give a hand to God. If you have any prayer requests, if you have anything in your mind that you would like to ask me, come to our Bible study. Talk to me. Speak to us. Email call, anything, any way that we could connect, please do so because we love, we are hungry for more of who God is. And through you, God, God will bring that blessing. God will pour out that glory in our life. Amen. Thank you for joining us today and we love you all. God bless. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.